let's take a look at more about thermal radiation. So imagine you have a very hot sword or a horseshoe that was created by a blacksmith, and they just took it out of the forge. Those objects should glow red, or white even, when they're very, very hot. So hot things emit light. Now wait a minute. Let's back up for a moment. Light. What is light? Let's remind ourselves. Light is an electromagnetic wave. Now, if you haven't seen that yet, you might see that later in topic C. But light is one form of electromagnetic wave. Electromagnetic waves come in many different kinds, and we organize them in the electromagnetic spectrum. This is given in your data booklet, but if you haven't seen it in a while, just remember this. Here's gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet, visible going from blue to red, infrared, microwaves, radio waves. And that is in order from, let's see, high frequencies to low frequencies, or from very small wavelengths to very high wavelengths. And it also turns out, if you look at the diagram in your data booklet, the energy of the wave is greater on the left of this diagram. So gamma rays carry more energy than radio waves. Okay. Now, electromagnetic waves, like all waves, carry or transmit energy. So in the context of thermal radiation, if we imagine we have this very hot object here, it's emitting light, it's em emitting electromagnetic waves. Those electromagnetic waves carry energy away from the object. And then if, say, your hand is over here, those electromagnetic waves are going to hit and be absorbed by your hand. And if they're absorbed by your hand, then your hand is going to absorb the energy from the electromagnetic waves, and your hand's going to start to feel warm. Okay, now going on from here, we're going to start talking about things called black bodies. And a black body is an object which absorbs and emits all wavelengths. Now, a black body is not an actual object. Uh, this is an approximation. But it is a useful approximation that we're going to use pretty often. So if we have a black body, we can write an expression for the rate at which a black body emits thermal energy as electromagnetic waves. And we're going to write it this way. The rate at which the object emits thermal energy is equal to this constant, sigma, times a times t to the fourth. a here is the surface area of the object. t is the surface temperature of the object. And that constant, that sigma, is called the Stefan-Boltzmann constant. It's equal to 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8 watts per square meter per Kelvin to the fourth. Yes, those are strange units. Now, this rate at which the object emits thermal energy is also called the power output of the object, and it's also called the luminosity. So we're going to write it as capital L. So the luminosity is equal to the Stefan-Boltzmann constant times the surface area of the object times the surface temperature object to the fourth power. So again, that L is the luminosity, and it's the rate at which the object emits thermal energy as electromagnetic waves. And that thermal energy emitted as electromagnetic waves, that's often called thermal radiation. And I want to be specific, that's different than nuclear radiation, the alpha and beta and gamma radiation that we'll see when we talk about nuclear physics. Here we're talking about thermal radiation, which is electromagnetic waves given off by an object with some temperature. So for example, if we think about the sun. The sun, turns out, is roughly a black body. Okay, that seems kind of strange. If it's a black body, the sun definitely is not black when you look at it. But that's the term for an object which absorbs and emits all wavelengths. So the sun is roughly a black body. And we can figure out, or approximate, the luminosity of the sun using this idea. So luminosity is equal to sigma a t to the fourth. Sigma is a constant, 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8 watts per square meter per Kelvin to the fourth. A, if we're going to do this for the sun, that would be the surface area of the sun. Well, the sun is a sphere, approximately. So we can write that the surface area of the sun is 4 pi r squared, where r is the radius of the sun. And... Fortunately, we know the radius of the sun. It's about 6.96 times 10 to the 8 meters. And then T. That's the temperature of the surface 
of the sun. And I want to specify here, that's the temperature of the surface. It's not just the average temperature throughout the sun. The center of the sun is at millions of Kelvin. But that is the temperature of the surface that's emitting the thermal radiation. And the surface of the sun is at about 5800 Kelvin. So that's the number that we put in there. And if you do that, you can calculate the luminosity of the sun. It's about 3.9 times 10 to the 26 watts. And if that sounds like a lot, it is. One of the ways to interpret this is 3.9 times 10 to the 26 watts is the same as 3.9 times 10 to the 26 joules per second. So what that's telling us is that every second, the sun is emitting 3.9 times 10 to the 26 joules as electromagnetic waves. Okay, let's look at a different situation. Let's imagine we have a little iron cube. Um, let's make it 10 centimeters on a side and give it a temperature of 500 Kelvin. So that's about 440 degrees Fahrenheit, so like a really, really hot oven. So the luminosity that would be given off by this iron cube, let's see, put in the numbers, there's the Stefan Boltzmann constant. Well, let's see, the area of a cube. One side of a cube, if it's 10 centimeters on a side, one side of a cube would be 0.1 meters squared, and there are six sides to a cube, so six times the area per side, and then times 500 Kelvin to the fourth power. The luminosity then comes out to 213 watts. So that iron cube, 10 centimeters on a side, at a temperature of 500 Kelvin or 440 degrees Fahrenheit, gives off 213 watts. Now another useful concept that we're going to use is brightness. And brightness is the electromagnetic radiation that's received by an object per square meter per second. Okay, um, I'm gonna write down the equation for brightness. So brightness is equal to L over four pi D squared. So let's imagine that we have some kind of source of electromagnetic waves, and that source has some luminosity. If we are a distance D away from that source, then we will receive electromagnetic energy per square meter per second that's given by the brightness. Now, if you notice, the distance here, there's a distance squared in the denominator. Essentially, this is going back to the idea of the inverse square law. I just want to point that out. So let's imagine that we have the sun and we have the earth, okay? Um, let's figure out what brightness is received at the earth from the sun. So we know the luminosity of the sun, okay? The luminosity of the sun we just found is 3.9 times 10 to the 26 watts. And we know the distance between the sun and the earth. It turns out it's 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. And using that, we can determine the brightness of the sun at the location of the earth. All right, and there we go. Now, last we're gonna look at something called the black body curve. So the black body curve is going to be plotted on this axis. Here we're going to have intensity of the electromagnetic waves, and here we're going to have wavelength on this axis. So if we plot that, it looks roughly like this for a black body. We're not going to worry about the exact function that this is. Um, it's a little complicated. But what's important right now is if we think about this peak, this peak is going to happen at some wavelength. We'll call it lambda max. Lambda max is related to the temperature of the object this way. Lambda max times the temperature of the object is equal to 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3 meters times Kelvin. Now I want to point out these units right here. That's meters times Kelvin, not millikelvin, but meters times Kelvin. This is called Wien's law. So what this tells us is that if you know the maximum wavelength emitted by the black body, then you can figure out the temperature of the object. And that turns out to be extraordinarily powerful in a lot of circumstances. But before we think about uh, ways to apply this, first I want to draw the black body curve for multiple temperatures um, on the same axes. So here we're going to have the intensity of the electromagnetic waves. Here we're going to have the wavelength that's emitted. If I have a relatively cool object, a low temperature object, then the curve will look something like this. Lambda max will be over here. If I have a higher temperature object, well, if we look at Wien's law, higher temperature object, we should have a smaller lambda max. 
Also, if it's a higher temperature object, it turns out the entire curve on this graph is greater. So for a higher temperature object, it might look like this. And again, has a smaller value of lambda max. And if we have an even hotter object, it would look something like this. Again, everywhere the curve is now uh, greater than in the lower temperature objects, and lambda max is even smaller. And then an even hotter object, a higher temperature object, would look like this. So notice, for a hotter object, a higher temperature object, a higher temperature object is going to have a greater intensity at every single wavelength, and the peak, the lambda max value, is going to decrease as the temperature of the object increases. Now, if you're wondering why I'm being kind of coy here and I'm not giving you the full equation for this function, right? I'm just drawing shapes here. The reason why is because it's a little bit intense. Uh, if I were to give you the actual equation that describes what you're seeing, the intensity would equal 2hc squared over lambda the fifth times 1 over e to the hc over lambda kt minus 1. <laughs> h here is Planck's constant, c is the speed of light, lambda is the wavelength. Uh, over here again, there's Planck's constant again, speed of light, wavelength, k is the Boltzmann constant, and t is the temperature of the object. It's a little intense. I skipped over quite a few details, and I'll leave it to a future physics class to take apart these things.